No psychological evaluations are unique. In fact, they're very comprehensive. They also include a, a comp uh, psychological evaluation as well as, if they're for children, academic testing as well. It's like a, the big umbrella that anything can fall underneath it. With neuropsychological testing, what one does is they look and assess the various functional systems of the brain. So, beginning with the left side of the brain, again for most people. If you're left-handed, about a third of the left-handed, it's switched. The left brain is the verbal, that's where our verbal skills are located. It's very analytical, very logical. The right brain is more creative, although a lot of left brain people are creative. But it looks at the big picture, it looks at the gestalt. For example, if I look at a chair, my left brain's going to look at the legs, the arms, the seat, and my right brain's going to look at the overall picture of it and put those two together, a hard chair. Um, the right brain also is where we process emotions as well as the nonverbal aspects of human behavior, you know, body language, facial expressions. A lot of children who suffer from autism or Asperger's have deficits in the ability to process nonverbal behaviors. Then we look at memory. We have sensory memory, short term, and working memory. Sensory memory is when you're driving the car down the road and the information literally goes in one ear and right out the other. You only hold it long enough to keep the car on the road. The next stage is short term or working memory. That's where information has to go in. It's like, if I'm comparing the brain to a keyboard, it's the, where it's inputted in order to get it into short, uh, into long-term memory, okay? Now, the key aspect of getting from sensory into short-term memory is attention. A lot of people come to me as they get older and say, I have problems with memory. Well, it's not a memory problem, it's attention, because the information never got into memory in the first place because they didn't pay sufficient attention. That leads me to the discussion of ADHD. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is one of the worst named syndromes out there because attention is just at the tip of the iceberg. ADHD is really um, decreased functioning in that prefrontal lobe or the executive skills of the brain. If I'm comparing the brain to a computer. A person with ADHD has a fine petty and processor. In fact, uh, the ADHD population and tends to have higher IQs than the non-ADHD population in general. But it's the operating system, that prefrontal lobe, that has difficulties. And that's due to having insufficient neurotransmitters available for them to transmit the information effectively and fluently. Um, so we look at memory, we look at right brain and left brain memory, we can look at fine motor planning, and again, the executive skills, um, which are related to planning, organization, problem solving, multitasking.